Hi, this is Tim Heston, Senior Editor at the Fabricator Magazine, and thanks so much for joining us for this Fabtech edition of Automation Talk. And I'm sitting with several uh, representatives from Salvignini America, and I'll, I'll let them go down the line. So, I'm Matt Kloffenstein, Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Hi, I'm Doug Johnson, the CEO. Hi, Giovanni Piccolo, Vice President of Project Management and Application. All right. And first, I want to just start this conversation. We've talked to various shops at different levels of automation op adoption and different approaches to automation. We've talked to Kendall Howard, where the business model literally was shaped with automation uh, about 10 to 15 years ago. Schindler Elevator, which has come to fruition where it's end-to-end -end automation from the front office all the way uh, down to uh, the final, final constraint processes and assembly and out the door. So I'm, just as a starter question, here at the show, what are people saying about their goals in automation? What, how, do, how, are, how are people coming to the booth and asking you, hey, how do I get started? What are the first steps? Well, we do, we're getting a lot of interest, of course, uh, in our panel vendor technology because it's a first level of automation that people see in their farming and fabrication departments. Uh, so there's a high level of interest in that. And everybody says, you know, when you talk about the business development and the people and trying to find people, they're, they're gradually moving forward to flexible automation. When we talk about zero setup and uh, flexible automation on that, it, it just increases the velocity of the parts that you can produce through your shop without having that, that individual within an organization that has to go through and take 15, 20, 30 minutes to set up that press. It's automatic. So they go, go from one part to the next part to the next part without having any setup person and operators getting their manipulating tools around to produce the parts. To dovetail what to Matt said, I mean, the uh, up until about five years ago, the labor situation, we've always said people will buy our technology <clears throat> because of labor, and less labor and, and lower scrap rates. With the pandemic, it's been magnified now. The labor problem is just is so, so much significantly higher. So as a result, I don't want to say you're forced into the automation, but you're forced into the automation. And what that means is you're going to, the, the issue of automation is more of a longer term issue. You may start with a panel bender, but I don't think anybody just goes out and decides on day one, we're going to automate the whole process on day one. You begin with a panel bender and then you bring the other technologies along with it. And you're making adjustments on the fly in many cases as the economic conditions change, right? Up until 2020, we really didn't have a significant altering event in our industry or in the economy. Now you have. Now how are you going to adjust to to that and from that going forward? Going forward, and the biggest thing, I know, Giovanni, I'll ask you this, is that the uh, uh, I've seen shops out there integrate incredible automation on the floor, welding, robotics, etc. But then they go to me and go, oh my gosh, front office automation, front office automation, we need this because order processing, there's so much so much error that happens up front. And now we have very productive machines that are not very productive because we have bad information on the floor. So kind of describe how a shop can evolve uh, to uh, bring automation all the way up from you know nesting to quoting. I think this is really a holistic approach you must have uh, into the business organization. Uh, when we speak about automation, we always think of a robot which is automatically replicating the action of a human being. Well, it's not only to serve a machine, but it's also how to transfer information to organize the, the job on the machine that is important to be automated. Automated means to bring the intelligence into a computer and transfer this intelligence with interesting and effective algorithms so to optimize the most precious resource that is time. When we speak about what happened in a factory, it can be, for instance, that you over automate a simple sector of your factory, and at the end, you disrupt all the rest because you can't keep up. So we have really to educate the journey to the automation to have an holistic approach. Say, if I have to feed the data there, I really need to think to my process holistically. You know, I'll talk a little bit about Schindler Elevator. You know, that again, they've they have the pinnacle of automation from cradle to grave, 
but they also have a standalone panel bender. They also have standalone lasers from you guys. They have a different flow cell uh, from that area, and they have an interesting training regimen where they they, they cross-train folks for certain automation. They cross-train folks with some of the old timers by the press break, so they learn that. So how do you decide what to automate, but how do you decide, well, listen, we also need this this semi-manual, or man I'll call it semi-manual because it's not, it's still offline programming, offline bend simulation, so there's still quick change on the break, but it's not flow through, it's, it's still manual handling. Uh, how, how, how do you split that value stream? This is a, many million dollars question, right? So I would say that what is the right approach? Every case is a different case, right? But what we normally think is that you have to look a factory, a business, start from the shipping gate, go backward. See where are the weak points of this organization? Where do you really need automation? Where do you have the blocking factor that avoid you to ship the goods in time or you have quality or, uh, problem or stuff like that. I think this is where you should focus your attention. This is where you should seed the first automation and let it spread around. Many of our customers started, for instance, and if I can mention our P2, for the most, uh, let's say, compact automated system, but around you have to bring parts around. And people start to think, how can I do it? How can I feed this machine which has this characteristic? And we have seen that this is what's spreading around. But I always, when talking about automation, I, I, I always go with the, the KISS principle. Let's keep it simple to start with, and then you can build from that. Because Rome wasn't built in a day. A fully automated factory is not going to be built in a, in a, a week. And so baby steps along the way. Matt, I'll, I'll ask you this. Now, you, how many years have you been in this industry, Matt? A little over 30. <laughs> a little over 30. So kind of bring me back in time as far as the the the, the, the perception of automation 30 years ago. Because uh, surprisingly, if you go back 30 years in the Fabricator magazine and, you know, the panel bender was still there. Yes, you know? yes it was, <laughs> yes. But, and, but what's the perception of, of that versus today? Well, 30 years ago, it, it, was, a, it was very intimidating. Uh, any bit of automation, uh, going from press brakes, stir presses, into any automated forming operation. Uh, myself, the company, former company I was with, we were going through that process. And it was almost too good to be true. You know, So a lot of people, even the owner of that company at the time said, there's no way this machine can do all of this stuff. But as we evolved through that over the years, you know, the, the adoption rate is getting better on automated panel bending machines because when they see panel bending machines, they think it can only do panels, but that's not true. There's a lot of things it can do, you know, and that evolution from year to year to year has come to where we're at today. Uh, you know, with all electric machines, uh, the integration of three-dimensional modeling, uh, just drag and dropping it into uh, the software and creating the progress, because I think that's going to be the next obstacle for companies to overcome because as it is getting harder and harder to find people, it's getting harder and harder to find programmers as well. So they're looking for that easy button, you know, how can we make this easier? And it's gonna be through the software as we go on. I'll dovetail on that where, uh, you know, I've seen, uh, you know, folks come to, come to us after they read the magazine and go, okay, uh, I had one reader who was half my age, and he's just inherited a, a job shop, and he said, listen, uh, I, want, I want something that, that uh, you know, seamless information. He grew up in the, in the in the internet age, and he wants. All right, why can't I have this simulation offline? Why isn't this talking to that? And he, he, he wanted to ask me about seamless flow uh, from cradle to grave, from quote, especially from quoting, because like if it, we can get this down in the quoting stage, boy, there's so much opportunity. So I'll end with this, uh, Doug. Where do you see 2023 uh, post pandemic, post post supply chain challenges? Uh, what's your outlook and, and where, where do you see automation's trajectory uh, going forward? I think I'm an optimistic guy. I think 2023 will be a better year. But again, you have to still look look at the some of the fundamentals. The labor problem is not going away. And I stress that a lot. And, and you can see it. You can smell it. You feel it. Uh, as much as we'd like to, pres you know, you know, just to wish it away, it's not going away. So you have to just 
keep down that, that, that automation process journey. Whatever stage you're on, it's the what's the next step in that process. Yeah, I'll, I'll end with this thought. There was a, a shop I visited several years ago where they, they, they implemented several stages of automation from panel bending, they had a, a punch laser, uh, they had uh, various equipment on the floor, and they got their operators involved and said, hey, you know, can you mention about, hey, it's only for panels? Well, he mentioned, hey, can we nest these parts together? Can we bend them as one? Can we move this bend line away from this hole? Operators were asking this question, and operators were getting engaged and kind of lifting above the, all right, I'm just gonna put this in, uh, put this, in, you know, in the brake in front of me or load this in the panel bender in front of me. They were actually getting involved in, in knowledge and forming uh, expertise uh, more so than ever before, thanks to all this new automation on the floor. So uh, from all of us here at FMA and on behalf of Salvignini America, thanks so much for joining us for this FabTech edition of Automation Talk, and we'll see you next time.